Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to show you a really cool colour toning trick which I use most of the times and I'm going to apply it to this picture. I'm I've stopped my editing. It is quarter past eight on Saturday evening and why not do this right now? If you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button, click the bell icon. I upload a video every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. This is a picture of Pippi and uh, yeah, I really like it. This is what it looked like when it came in. So we've already done quite a major transformation. I do have a purpose in mind for this picture. The main situation was removing that. I've also moved the tree like so, <laughs> tree is now here. So yeah, things have changed a bit. I want to change the color tone. So at the moment, this is very green, kind of deep. And um, I'm gonna show you this cool trick. Essentially, we're in Photoshop and we've got our layers. Then what we want to do is go ahead down into the adjustments in the bottom right hand corner, click on there, click on curves. So you guys have already seen me do a selective color adjustment and all of the other, effects that I've put on this. So I've shifted the light. So instead of being more lit on the log and um, these bits of Pippi, I've just switched the light a little bit so that it's more on her and less on the log. Um, I've done a basic vignette. I've done a movable color. Um, I did my core adjustments, which is more color based and overall brightness. And then I also always have my safekeeping layer, which has got bits I use <laughs> and might come back to. For example, my original mask from when I masked hair. So the hair masking video, I will link that above now. That is gonna be essential for this particular adjustment, but we're not gonna do that right this sec. And then when we are in the curve section, by the way, all of the other edits that I've gone through, I will link above because they are in that big edit video, which went out the other week. So we're in curves and you wanna make sure that you can see your properties. So what I've done, I've made this curves adjustment layer. What I'm then gonna do is go into this RGB. Quick tip, just straight up with regards to curves. Before I go in there, just on the normal slider, which is the RGB, red, green, blue, all of the colors. If you click on this little hand, that gives you an eyedropper that you can move around. Now, if, watch as I hover over her, watch the circle come up on this line. So what that's doing is that's saying, underneath your eyedropper, this is the tone that we're on. This is the brightness. So that's your normal histogram in the background. So I could pick on one of the darkest areas in the whole image and lift that up. And that would focus specifically on those tones. And then I could pick a bright area and bring that down. And then it's just working on that area. Now, I wouldn't do this in real life. So sometimes I do minor adjustments, but not this much. I'm gonna go back a step there. And I'm just gonna go into here. And I personally use blue the most. So remember that RGB, red, green, blue, is the opposite to CMY, cyan, magenta, yellow. So red is opposite to cyan. Uh, G is opposite to magenta and uh, blue is opposite to yellow. So if I add blue to a area like the shadows, that removes the yellow. And then similarly, if I was to remove blue from somewhere, for example, the highlights, that would add yellow. So if I go to one of the darkest areas of the image and I add blue, did you just see the difference there? So that's the difference by just clicking and dragging with this. So what that's done is that's affecting really most of, well it's affecting most of the image, but more so in the shadows. Then I could go ahead and grab a mid-tone uh, where, where some of her data is, and then I could just bring that down. And that puts the yellow back there. Now I'm not gonna do that. So to remove a point, you click on the point and then press your backspace and that removes the point. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna actually grab onto my histogram up here in the highlights and just pull that down a little bit. And what that has done is that's added some of the warmth back to the top of the image. So you could move that all the way down, but I think that looks less realistic personally. So I keep it kind of like high up there and you just wanna take it past. If you don't know where you are, look at your input and your output. So your input and your output. Input is kind of what it was most of the time. Output is what you're changing it to. So if the input is 199 and my output is 197, I've added two 
points of yellow to that situation. So you can you will always know where you are there. Remember 255 is pure white. So I think I'm quite happy with that. So do you see how that color shift has changed the image now? So the shadows have got more blue in, the uh, highlights have got more yellow in, and then you could go through into, say for example, red. So you've got red R is opposite to C from CMYK, so that's cyan. So if you wanted to, you could, still with your hand tool selected, you could click on a shadow area and add red or you could remove a shadow area and therefore add cyan. Now cyan does mess a little bit more with the greens to be honest with you. I'm just gonna press my backspace to remove that. But in the midtones, you may want to add just a little bit of red. And then in the highlights, you could cool it down to make it a little bit more eerie and add cyan. So now we've kind of gone here, it looks like we've got this cool little slightly zombie-esque filter on but really the color of her hasn't changed a lot you could at this point then go ahead and grab your safekeeping hair mask layer which for me is this one here and stick that up onto your mask but that's not really necessary so i'm gonna just undo my red ones because i don't really need them and then your green, you've got to think, right, so um, G, green, is opposite to the second letter in CMYK, so M, magenta. So magenta is pink. So we've got, if we um, go over our greens are mainly, you know, highlights, we've got some greens here. You could tone down the greens if you wanted to. By toning down the greens in this way, you're adding magenta. So just, you know, bear that in mind. Again, I don't really tend to mess with this one. I kind of stick to the blues because I think, you know, it gives a really nice feel to the image. So I'm just adding a little bit more. You could go ahead and add quite a lot of blue um, and then you can mask her out and that'll make it look, feel quite eerie almost because um, it's quite a big transformation there. And obviously you can always go overboard and then just bring it down, bring it down on your opacity, which just sort of calms it down a little bit. And if you wanted to then, you could go in with your selective color which we had in the full edit, um, head over to yellows, which will pick up quite a lot of the C. There we go. And you can change that again, C, M, Y, K. So the opposite of C is R. The opposite of M is G. The opposite of yellow is B. So red, green, yellow. I always forget, when I say it out loud, I just can't remember it all. So yeah, so basically that is um, one of my favorite things to do to affect tone. I like to use personally the RGB curves. I'm gonna carry on with my little edit now and leave you guys to it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do press the subscribe button and click the bell icon. The bell icon helps you out because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload a video every week and sometimes one if I feel like it. I will show you, well, I'm not going to say it's the final finished version, but I will show you a finished version at the end of this video. I usually go back and look at stuff afterwards. I hope you're having a really good week and I will see you all again so soon. Thanks so much for watching.